I think it's fair to say that Trump and Harris aren't huge fans of each other. But on one weirdly specific topic, there are two peas in a pod. No tax on tips. We are going to not charge taxes on tips. People making tips. Eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. So they both made their announcements during campaign stops in the battleground state of Nevada, coincidentally in the city of Las Vegas, where there are lots of people who work for tips, but are surprisingly not really tipped that well. Money.com published a study last year that says Delaware tips the best. Hi, I'm in Delaware at 21.8%. My people in Dub V came in at number five, wild, wonderful, and generous. North Carolina landed at 22, tipping an average of 19.7%, and way down at the bottom at number five. 47, you find Nevada. Now, I'm not exactly sure why. There are probably lots of reasons for that. But here's one that got my attention. Last year, Formula One came to town, along with thousands of foreigners from countries around the world, mostly Europe. And apparently, none of the Vegas servers wanted to wait on them. The local Las Vegas Fox station covered the story, with one server saying, quote, wait staff would divide the European tables evenly between them, knowing they would tip very little or not at all. You see, most of the world doesn't tip, or they only tip when they truly get exceptional service. In some countries, like Japan, it's considered rude, like an insult to their line of work. Tipping here is unique. It's not only encouraged, it's expected, and not just by the workers. It is actually baked into our laws, which begs the question, are you supposed to tip at a bakery? I, I never know. Let's go in depth on no tax on tips. We're going to start with a little bit of math. I want you to know exactly how much money we're talking about here. Don't go anywhere. Actually, why don't you come with me instead, just for a moment, this way. Let's play accountant for a moment, and let's do the taxes for my all-time favorite fictional bartender, Nick Miller from New Girl. And let's say that Nick is making the average salary for a U.S. bartender, $60,000 with the tips taxed, or $34,000 without taxing the tips. Now, for this argument, we're going to say Nick is single. Yeah, I know. Spoiler alert. He married Jess in the series finale. There's no way that lasted, so he's getting the $14,600 standard deduction, leaving him with two very different numbers when it comes to taxable income. Now, the first $11,600 is taxed at 10%. The remainder of his salary will be taxed at 12%, leaving him with these amounts for his total tax paid, which is a difference of $3,120. So, you know, we're talking about some real money here, potentially. Back to the desk. The truth is we really know very little about the specific proposals from either candidate. Trump did start talking about it first and says that Harris is copying him. And he's got a point. Trump did talk about the idea months before Harris brought it up, but he never got into specifics. Most people have referred to a bill introduced by Republican Senator Ted Cruz in July that did gain support from the National Restaurant Association. But most analysts on both sides of the aisle agree that it needs some work. The critics say that his plan isn't specific enough and has some glaring loopholes. I mean, Imagine the manager of a hedge fund taking their $20 million bonus as a tax-free tip. Harris says she's got a fix for that and wants to add an income limit to keep rich people from taking advantage. But what about everybody else, you know, taking advantage? Think about it. How many more people would start showing you this screen if it meant tax-free money? I asked an economist. I think it would cause there to be an explosion of people are earning through tips, and there's a lot of pushback to that. How do you feel about tipping culture today? Do you feel that it's changed a lot, especially since COVID? A survey of more than 1,000 Americans found three out of four people think tipping culture has gone too far. Seven out of 10 say they've started tipping less because of it. Social media is full of viral stories of people who were asked to tip at Subway or at a self-service kiosk, tipping at a grocery store or for that teenager scooping your ice cream cone. Last week, I went to Panera. I got two pastries from the display case and they asked for a tip. You're giving people, as you said, an incentive to try to earn more of their money through tips it would be akin to me when I was teaching students as they went out the door, I might say, OK, if you like today's lecture, I'll take a tip from you. Uh, well, that's the kind of environment I don't think we want to create. Does that feel extreme to you? 
I mean, kind of, professors make decent money, but what about the TAs? Maybe we should start tipping them. What about for fast food or an oil change? At the clothing store for a tow truck driver? How about at a pick your own strawberry farm or pizza when you pick it up? These are all places that I have read complaints about. Is that where we're headed? I don't know, tell me your thoughts. Do you think that tips should be taxed? Have you been asked to tip at a place that surprised you? Send me an email, dan at wral.com. Now, you might be thinking, Dan, you're leaving out some important stuff here. What about just giving everyone a living wage so we don't have to tip, like they do in those European countries that frustrate waiters at the Venetian? Or the fact that many businesses subsidize the tips you do give to those workers so they can pay them less than three bucks an hour, right here in North Carolina. There's lots to talk about on this topic, but that's gonna be it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Thank you for uh, stopping by and watching it tonight. So, if there's nothing else, you can just, no? Okay, fine, just emails then. Dan at WRL.com, tell me what's on your mind and we'll go in depth. <laughs>